he has a certain charm about him which lets him get away with most things. What you some folks can see with him though is that kind of brusque exterior, the old, the old ex-marine. But there's uh, an awful lot more to him than that. He loves talking to people and uh, whenever he meets folk he'll get straight in there and um, know all about their family history in about five minutes. And he just does take a, a big interest in people. Uh, Mick Ty, mountain guide, living in Glenroy, uh, 65 years of age, I'll do. First of all, I came to the mountains uh, through the Marines. I was a Royal Marine Commando when I was younger for 10 years, and they taught me how to ski and how to climb and to become an instructor. So when I left the Marines, I came to Fort William in 1977, or here in Glenroy, where we are now. and. Uh, because I'd been involved in various activities in the Marines, it was a fairly natural thing that one, I became a guide, which I did in 1979. And then uh, I was actually walking down the high street in Fort William one morning, and a guy called Andy Nickel, who was the secretary of the rescue team at the time, said, Hi, morning, Mick. Uh, I would like to tell you you're in the rescue team now. I said, Oh, am I? He said, Oh, yes, we had a meeting last night and we voted you in. I said, Oh, uh, very nice. Thank you very much. Nobody actually asked me or said anything like that. So. That was, I think, in 1979. So then I became, along with many other people in Loch Arbor, one of Loch Arbor Mountain Rescue Team, which I did for 28 years. The boys in the rescue team reckoned if somebody needed to be lowered down the North Face, uh, then it was best if they lowered an Englishman down, because if he made a cock up, then there was no great loss, you know. Uh, so I very often, not all the time, but I was often the one who got lowered down the face. But once you went over the edge and you were dangling in space, the biggest worry uh, was not actually your own safety, was worrying about the, uh, the first aid you may have to do on a casualty. And there could be very few people in the audience who haven't done a bit of first aid or know about a bit, but actually doing it hanging on the face a thousand feet in the air in the dark in the storm is slightly different. Many years ago I just started collecting old mountaineering gear just for fun. And then uh, the idea kind of blossomed a little bit and uh, what was my own personal collection became a charity. So it's now the Scottish Mountain Heritage Collection, which belongs to the nation, albeit it was mine originally. So when I'm dead and gone, the trustees will carry on. Well, the dream is to have a museum, no question about that. Uh, we don't have, in the whole of Britain, let alone Scotland, uh, a mountaineering museum. As years passed by, it will be seen that there was an opportunity at this time to collect things. If Mick hadn't done it, then the opportunity would have been lost. Um, we're very lucky that his enthusiasm, his drive, has, um, has put together the Mountain Heritage Collection. We're here, the Dragon's Tooth. We're already gusting 60 up here. Pilot says the headwinds are eating up the fuel. It's going to be tight. Just a very small part of my career, I was a stuntman. Can you repeat that? What do you reckon? Can we get a winchman down? And that particular clip uh, that you saw there was uh, me getting lowered out of a helicopter on the old man of store. Watch out for the downdraft and the crosswinds. Yeah, what can I do about them? Absolutely nothing. And the pilot is having a bit of trouble trying to keep the aircraft steady. And I did this monstrous pendulum. And I thought I was going to start off on the, on the west coast of Scotland and finish out in the Western Isles. And the only thing I thought would have made really good telly if they'd actually filmed the pendulum, because it would be better telly than the actual the stunt itself, you know. Doing new climbs has been probably one of my favourite things all my life. I've never been a very hard climber, but I've always been, should we say, an adventurous climber like. Uh, and I did a tally uh, a couple of years ago, and I've done nearly a thousand new routes. He's been, what, 40 years mountain guiding, and um, I've only ever twice, I think, known him come back off the hill and had what he would say was would be a bad day. He always enjoys it. He enjoys taking people out. He loves giving them a, a good time and an adventure. And I think one of the nicest things that people say, people that have been clients of his for many years, will come back and say they were the best times of their lives that they had when they were out on trips with me. And I think that's just fantastic.